Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a smoke asset and we're going to be doing a low resolution smoke asset but you can change a few settings and make it more high quality if you want. So I'm just going to add an icosphere and place the camera, drag the icosphere out of view. Then we're going to add in a cube for the domain and scale it up as much as you want. So now with the domain selected, if we come over here to the physics panel and choose smoke and then domain, then choose the icosphere, again smoke, and this time we won't flow. Okay. So I'll try it, not all S, we want. Just save this. Okay, so now if we press Alt A can see that the smoke works. Um, we just need to make a few different uh, tweaks. If we reduce the temperature difference then the smoke will now go down rather than up. So that's what we, well, that's what we want in this example. I just want to add in a background image because I want the smoke to um, act in a, a certain way to affect the text. So I'll just uh, find the text. This is just acting as an image so I can try and guide the smoke in that direction. So I want the smoke to come down and then sort of split off and reveal the text. So to do that what we need to do is add a new object. I'm just going to scale this one down first. Apply the scale. It's still a bit big so what we can do is reduce the density. So again the more you reduce this the more lighter the smoke looks, the more see through it looks as well. Okay, that should be okay for now. So I'm just going to shift A, add in a cone, drag it down a bit, add smoke and collision. So now when the smoke hits it, it should um, just increase the resolution. Also check smoke adaptive domain, the settings are fine and we will be adding high resolution a little bit later on. So for now this, the cone does affect it, uh, not very well but we can change that. So we just tab into edit mode, drag it up a little bit. I'm going to front view so I can see things better. I want to, if I grab the bottom bit, these bottom vertices here, and just drag it up. And if we extrude and then scale, extrude again, and scale a lot more. So we get this kind of shape. So let's try that now. It's still a bit too high. So just drag it down. It kind of works perfect. So the smoke's now going in the way we want it to. Um, just double check it. So let's just set the end frame. We don't need to have too many frames for this. We also want to change, uh, you can change the colour, I don't think it makes a difference. I'm just going to change it, make it a little darker, add two subframes. Now with the domain selected, we can add some high resolution. We want to give it a couple of divisions and change this to FFT. So now we press Alt A, it will be a little bit slower, <laughs> but the, uh, the smoke looks a lot better. You see it's running at like two frames per second. So once that's pre-cached all the way in, all the way through, sorry, now you can bake it and it'll be a lot quicker. So to bake it, all we need to do is come down here to the smoke cache and make sure you set the end frame. So if you've already set it to say like 150, you don't want to be baking 250 frames. Then you just bake all dynamics and it literally takes 10 seconds. There you go, your smoke's been baked. So we can just delete this because we don't need it anymore. And also get rid of the background images. Okay, so if you're hoping to render this and you know get smoke straight away, um, yeah, you'd be wrong. I was hoping the same thing. So what we need to do is change this to uh, the world view to a lighter color. Also change this to transparent because we're going to be using an image sequence. So make sure you've got PNG selected as the output RGBA. And while we're here, we can just set the output. So what you need to do is set up a folder where your PNGs will be going. So 
just add a new folder, call it whatever you want. And then make sure you, you, you click the folder so you're inside it, and then accept. Okay, so also change the resolution to whatever you want. For this example, I'm going to knock it down quite low, because um, we're only using it as, as a mask for the ink drop effect. But if you don't want it to um, be a low resolution, make sure you don't drop the resolution. So what we need to do is come to the texture panel here, then down to type, and we want to choose voxel data. Then come here to the domain object and choose the cube. When you see the smoke in the middle, then you know it's working. Change this to materials. Now the materials can be a bit confusing um, if you don't remember them. For me, I'm a bit lazy and I don't remember them all the time, so I think, well, this should be an easier way to do it, and there is. So what we need to do, if we just delete that, if we set up a new material, and if we jump back over to 3D view, come into a new layer, Shift A, I'm just going to snap the cursor first, Shift A, add in a cube. Then we type spacebar and then quick smoke. So this sets you up a quick smoke with whatever object you've selected, which is great. Um, but usually you want to uh, select, make your own smoke. But it's made the materials for us. So if you go into the materials, it's already been set up for you. So you can copy them or you can just change it, uh, change it via the panel. So I'm just going to copy these, delete this, go back over to the smoke with the domain selected. Come back here, just paste the uh, the nodes in, just drag it over, and make sure you connect this to the volume, not the surface. So now when you render, then you should get something with smoke. See, so yeah, that literally took nine seconds on a low resolution. So I'm just gonna increase the samples, and again, you can knock down the resolution a bit more if you wanted to. You could also add in a blur here if you've got low resolution, um, just to make things look a little better. But I'm going to add the blur in later on, so I don't don't need to do that. So the difference with low resolution and 20 samples from nine seconds, this is going to take like 15 seconds probably, no, 17 seconds, almost 19 seconds. Okay. So that's why we're dropping down the resolution a bit more so we can save us on render time. Again, if you this is meant to be for um, one of your shots or your short films or anything like that, you obviously want high resolution smoke, so you wouldn't be doing this. But for the example that we're doing, uh, for the tutorial we're going to be doing later on, it's going to work fine. Okay, so with the difference between GPU and CPU, if you render it on the CPU, which we had to do in the old days, um, as you can see already, it's taking... It's taking its time just to do one frame. That, I paused that. It took two minutes to get to this point, and that was on CPU. <laughs> so if you can render on your GPU, I suggest you do. Come to System and check you can. So you just want to check and select CUDA. Then select the, you know, your graphics card that you're uh, that you have. So the difference between rendering on your CPU and your GPU is is a big difference. <laughs> so if you are rendering it on the CPU, then it's probably going to take you a long time. So if you want to download the um, this example that we've done here, make sure you head over to the website. The link will be in the description. So I hope this helped, this quick tutorial helped. Um, if it did, make sure you give it a like. Be sure to check out for the next tutorial, which is the ink drop effect.